We have all been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. There is also another pandemic that has been decimating indigenous, vulnerable languages all over the world. A vulnerable language is a language that is spoken by 5,000 people or less. And these languages are dying at an alarming rate. By one estimate, an indigenous language dies every two weeks. At this rate, UNESCO estimates that 90% of the indigenous languages of the world will die by the end of this century. Currently, there are 3,000 languages that are critically endangered out of the 7,000 languages spoken in the world. So why do languages die? There are many reasons, but I want to highlight only three. Political domination, economic pressure, and globalization. When these three factors combine, speakers of minority indigenous languages do not have any other choice but abandon their mother tongues to learn a prestigious language. There are 2,000 languages in Africa. 201 have already died. 308 are currently critically endangered. So I have a question for you. If an indigenous language dies, does it matter? Thank you. <laughs> Mark and I think that it does. Our students think that it does. Our university, St. Cloud State University, thinks that it does. The United Nations think that it does. Suppose for a minute that English dies. Of course, English is not going to die. You know that. It is right now the most prestigious language spoken on planet Earth. But just suppose that English will die. If English dies, the concept of garage sale <laughs> will disappear forever. <laughs> and do you know why? Because there is no other human language in which the concept of garage sale can be expressed. <laughs> garage sale is an important concept. Why? Because it involves community, it involves economics, and it involves season. Now, if an indigenous language dies, the thousands of years of accumulated knowledge, cultural knowledge, and ethnoscientific and knowledge dies. Mark and I and our students and our university have taken one of those critically endangered languages in Africa, and we are experimenting with it. That language is called Beti, or Betine, or Eotile, it has three names. In 1999, there were only 200 elderly speakers of the language left. That was 23 years ago, and as you know, older people tend to die fast. If we do nothing, Betty is going to die. So Mark and I and our students 
and our university have decided to experiment with something to see if we can save or document that language. Betty, the Betty people are uh, special because they have a very exquisite and sophisticated knowledge of fishery and aquatic life. So if they die, all this knowledge is going to die. So I'm going to let Mark come and explain to you what we, our students and our university are doing about it. Simply documenting an, an endangered language is only useful in academia. What we would like to do is create an interactive application similar to the, the virtual assistants that we see today, such as Siri or Alexa. Um, these virtual assistants, however, they took decades to develop and took months in the recording studio to get what you have. I use a virtual assistant at home for home automation, and as my wife could tell you, it is far from perfect. Um, as, as Etienne said, endangered languages, the problem with them is we have elderly speakers, they're disappearing quick. Um, they quite often speak another language in their day-to-day -day lives, which has an impact on the language spoken, um, the, the, the endangered language. What we need to come up with meaningful interactions in that language is not just sentences. We need stories, we need wisdom, we need sayings from that language. Um, it's said that we need at least a thousand sentences to be able to synthesize a language using a computer. But to do interaction in that, we need a lot more. But we have a, very, a dwindling supply of speakers of that language, and much of what we need is disappearing quickly. So how did a linguist and an engineer get together and start working on endangered languages? Well, I've known Etienne almost since I started at St. Cloud State in 2002. But it wasn't until a couple years ago he came by my office and he noticed a textbook that I was teaching from. And he noticed the co-author on that textbook was the same as the co-author on one of his favorite books. And we suddenly realized we had a linkage. And from that, we started teaching, co-teaching a class. Um, that was rather interesting, um, having an English professor and an engineering professor teach a class. I was teaching programming to linguist students, and he was teaching linguistics to engineers. I don't know who had the more difficult time there. <laughs> um, but it was a, an interesting thing. And now we have a research project going, and, um, and we're going to do the class again this spring. Um, so why a signal processing engineer and a communication engineer, which is what my training is, um, working on endangered languages? Well, the process of language production can be modeled as um, Harmonic sources followed by filtering. That's your vocal cords up through your mouth and, and nasal passages. Um, that's a signal processing problem. That's what we do in signal processing all the time, sources and filters. Um, communication, the communication side, we take bits and bytes and turn them into sentence or commands and messages and meaningful communication over the channel. Similar to the way you take sounds and turn them into syllables turn them into words, sentences that represent concepts. Um, so the, the, the two fields are very similar, very, very much uh, have, have similarities that, that we can use. And so we're hoping that by applying signal processing and communication that we could rapidly um, document the language and hopefully create some useful interaction there. Um, Etienne started teaching me linguistics, and I realized very quickly that linguistics, um, what they do is very manual. They use computers, but they're still manually identifying each syllable and each sound and e documenting each sound. Um, very manual process. With languages disappearing as fast as Etienne has indicated, we just don't have that resources and we don't have the time to, um, to do that type of thing. So we've got to speed it up. So we're going to look at um, automating that work and uh, help hopefully create those uh, meaningful interactions. Um, our students are very engaged in this. They love these projects. Um, it gives them something that they, they can immediately apply their education to. Um, they're lining up to and, and working for free right now, which is nice. Um, <laughs> don't, yeah, don't tell them I said there might be money. 
Um, but um, it's, it's quite often meaningful to them, and many of our students recognize or understand the, the significance of endangered languages. Some of the international students do come from areas where there are endangered languages, and some of them even have relatives that speak those. So it's a very meaningful thing to them. Um, it's easy to turn our backs on language and, and endangered languages. They're difficult to do document, they're difficult to do anything with, um, but really the, the help or the, the, um, the, the richness that we would get from those languages in concepts, in knowledge, in, in culture, it's well worth the investment and the, well worth the resources to invest. Um, now we're gonna show you a, or actually sound, uh, let you hear a couple of sentences from the Betty language that we, we've been working with. Yehinke, Côte d'Ivoire, Mononisa, Bike, Sungana, Ne, Ye Betty Bio, Nyan Sungana, Ye Nem Yemua, Totulia K, Betty Besun, Bobomon, Wosun Bobolomon, Che, Watapile, Wobolim Bonfo. Thank you very much for uh, listening to our talk. Uh, we want to end with this. The United Nations have seen that indigenous languages are in a dire, dire situation. So they have declared 2022 to 2032 the International Year of Indigenous Languages. We invite you to help in this effort and to support us in any way you can in this effort. And we, we want to conclude by saying this. We also want to thank TEDx St. Cloud for giving us this platform to bring to your attention the plight of the world indigenous languages. Thank you.